Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. And I'm Robbie. From Auto Pacific. You even put your own thing and then you didn't. I did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is our podcast about anything and everything off road. We're going to actually talk about things that we I, we drove on asphalt for a little bit today. Actually, I drove some off road. I drove a lot of off road stuff on asphalt too, but completely beside the point. We're still socially distant. Uh, I'm in Kansas City, Ross is in Connecticut, and Robbie from Auto Pacific is in Wisconsin. How, how specific do you want? Do you want Milwaukee? Like, do you want to get even weirder? Oh, what are your GPS points? Uh, it is 0.333. No. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> that would be really Thirty eight <laughs> parallel. Wait, no, I should not. know that, actually. I should look at that tattooed or something. <laughs> you, need, you need Milwaukee's GPS tattoo. <laughs> it's not too That's basic. Awesome. <laughs> uh, we're going to jump straight into the industry news where I don't... I know that people have talked about the LX 600, but I don't know that anyone's talked about the things that we're going to talk about on it. Um, I've seen a number of things talked about like engines and styles and things like that, but Robbie and I attended an event. Uh, we should probably go ahead and say that for the Midwest Automotive Media Association or MAMA, if we say. MAMA. Yes, you got that right. Um, <laughs> Cause we're not talking about our mothers where it's, we went to the same place at Road America and we sat through a presentation on the Lexus NX, and then he got done talking about that, which is that actually sounded great for its purpose and what it's going to do. Mm-hmm. But then he started talking about the LX600, and we were like, "Yes, all right, all of the all of the details, give it to us." Yeah, I was kind of, I was kind of just like <laughs> for the audio listener, he just leaned into the camera and like, yeah. really <laughs> uh, was the same thing everybody buying those will do to look at the price tag. Uh, mm. See, but I don't think they will because it's Lexus and Escalades are hundred grand. Like Wagoneers are a hundred grand. <laughs> grand Wagoneers, yeah. Grand Wagoneers. Grand Wagoneers. Yeah, Wagoneers was a lot, but uh, we'll clarify for our Stellantis friends later. But he teased a standard model, so it, he didn't really say it was a trim trim level. He didn't really tell us what they would call it. They're not going to call it base. But basically, standard model to be like an L. Oh man, I almost said an LC for LX. A Land Cruiser equivalent LX in 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 price in theory anyway. He also he he said the words coil springs without the automatic high control. I just want to point out the fact that at the end of the LC two hundred run, the Land Cruiser was more expensive than the LX, and we were. Robbie, were we talking about the other day? We, we were, were actually, and I was, I was, actually, I was actually going to look up the price, but yeah, I was, I was writing about the LX 600 the other day, and the, yeah, the the starting price for a 2021 Land Cruiser was, I think it was actually the exact same as just the base LX that's on sale right now, mm. um, which is interesting because I mean the Land Cruiser for quite a while used to be like substantially cheaper than the Lexus, but now yeah, I think they're both right at about like 90 grand or something mm. like that forward so metal springs not the adjustable height stuff that drives that was driving lane cruiser guys nuts anyways like that's what we wanted right um the I wheel size wrong. you're right exactly it's less stuff to go wrong the wheel size is possibly or probably going to be an 18 inch wheel on this trim um i think the, the oh, all the other ones so small well it the other ones were like 20s or 22s like uh, i just it's just the world we live in 18s have been 200s forever now. Like the two, even the 100 series was up to an 18, wasn't it? Uh, that beats me. I don't know. I thought because mine was 16, 16s, but you can definitely fit 17s on on 100. Yeah. Anyway, so they're saying probably 18 inch, and then uh, after that, it's basically going to be the exact same inside as every other Lexus. So they're going to make the inside really nice. It made me immediately start thinking about the market for Land Cruiser 300 series front end swaps to LX 600 front end <laughs> swaps. I was like, you know, someone's going to do it. Somebody somebody's gonna, gonna somebody's like, going to do that. Parts. Yeah. And then there's going to be some like see. terrible knockoff model on, on eBay. You can buy like the it's right made out of like even cheaper plastic. <laughs> the the, the <laughs> safari <Paper mache. laughs> the so you, knockoff snorkel you, I put on. When you look at the, <laughs> the new LX 600 though, compared to the, the current, lx like it's the grill is not that different i mean like it's still kind of got it's still got like the spindle design that lexus Mm -hmm. is like known for but like you know it's it's really just like some of the the 
the design itself, like some of like, it's like more like kind of chrome, but I don't know. To me, it looks more like a, like a, like a Gillette razor or something like that, but it's not like it's, it shouldn't be as like striking and alarming as like people I think are making it out to be. Yeah. It's, same it, way, like, I think that actually looks pretty good. It's it kind of works. It's not as terrible as just like the blacked out predator. Like it's still the overall shape. Like mm-hmm. it's got the angles in and the angles out, but like, they, could we just make a couple of them black? The mm-hmm. F sport. Do you see the F sport where it is? Oh, it looks so good. It looks good. It actually genuinely looks good. Hold on, I gotta find that front end now. Well, F-sport. I think what's I think what they did well with that the LX though is like if you like look at that picture we were just talking about, you know, you've got the chrome spindle that goes like that. But I'm so glad they didn't extend that outward into like the air, like to the uh, to the sides above like the fog lamps or where the fog I mean, lamps would be. You guys can tell me if this is wrong. Let's see what you got. Yeah. Right, right, that's okay. it. That's it. Oh, that, that looks, looks great. Good. Yeah, that, that looks, looks really like good. A freaking Land Cruiser. <laughs> that's what they're hoping for. <laughs> I would just take those uh, side running boards off and drop down two inches smaller wheel size and call. I wonder it a... how integrated that is into the fender there. Yeah, it's hard to tell because that was yeah. that was every on the eighty series. Like, if you had the running boards, you had to have the integrated mm-hmm. instead of. Uh, there's probably so the front mud flap would integrate into the sidebar, but if you took the side step off, you could replace that front shorter mud flap that integrated with it with a full front one. So I wonder if there's a different version that could mm-hmm. absolutely be applied there. So we're we're still talking about crazy expensive SUVs, but for people that are like, there's no more linkers, well, yeah, there's no more name, but there's gonna have to be a vehicle of the similar persuasion. And it's the Lexus is getting the same yeah. turbo V6, right? Mm-hmm. That's twin turbo 3.5 v6 which makes quite a bit of horsepower and uh, it's going to be a lot more efficient too yeah and a lot of torque so um, the thing that came up on on Farah's podcast this week is the durability because you know if you wanted a vehicle that could go the most miles of pretty much anything on sale you bought one of the toyota the 47 or the 57 mm-hmm. and you know now the question is like the block can probably do it, you know, go half a million or a million miles, but can like the turbos do it. So Mm -hmm, it'll mm -hmm. be interesting to see like what's a 400,000 mile LC 600 look like, you know, does the turbo. Yeah. That's the LC LX 600. Sorry. That's yeah. That's a really, that's a really good question. Yeah. I feel like that's, that's probably the only really way to gauge how long these, I mean, and that, that engine in the L L S 600 H X. Oh yeah. LS, the, the big, the big luxury. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> but like that, I mean, that engine hasn't even been around like too long. So that'll be mm-hmm. kind of the, the time to tell test of it, I guess. Well, like from here on out. Has Ford been replacing turbos and EcoBoost engines? They kind of were early on. Like I have known two people for sure that have had their turbos go out and their EcoBoost Ford products like at under 50,000 miles. Okay. Twin turbo EcoBoost or single turbo EcoBoost? Uh, one of them was a 2012 Ford F-150. Okay, so twin turbo. So that was, a, yeah, I believe that was the twin that's turbo. Early, that's, I think. Early, that's the though. first year of it, isn't it? That was the first year of yeah. that, yeah. yeah okay, and so we can we can ignore that. First yeah, year then, doesn't count. <laughs> and then the other, one was a Link, the other one was a Lincoln uh, MK... God, what the hell was it? It was one of their crossovers. Not not the one that's based on the Ford Edge, but um, the the one that's based on the Flex. The MKC. Yes, yes, oh, they yes. Have yes. It in the first place. Yeah, <laughs> should have bought it in the first place. That but... is one of the weirdest looking cars I've ever made. <laughs> it looks like a Hermes, but his his turbo went out one morning. I guess he like he literally like went out to his car, started it, and he recorded a video, and there was just black smoke shooting out the back. Oof. Oh, <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Yeah. So hopefully Toyota's, and I, I mean, I don't know. I feel like even if Toyota does like keep going towards like force induction, I feel like their reliability is going to be probably a lot better than Ford's in the long term. It's not MKC. I can't find what that thing is called right now. I think it's the MKC. MKC. It wasn't the X. I thought it was the T. Like oh, not T. the not the not the truck, obviously, but like yes, it is the T. It is the T. The T, T is the like one a... that looks like a beluga whale. Mm-hmm. Right. That's what he's talking about. Oh yeah. Oof. Uh, ideal <laughs> anyways <laughs> anyways we'll see what happens so is there anything else that uh was of exciting news in lc 600 lx 600 land um 
I no, not really. Uh, there was a lot of he said that. Uh, gosh, let me. I have a slide. <laughs> I, I, t- I took a ton of pictures during the Grand Cherokee presentation. Didn't take it as mm-hmm. many as I should have during the LX. So <laughs> it still gets. Uh, all of them, I guess, are getting Lexus Safety System Plus. They're all getting a new Lexus interface multimedia. Um, body on frame, ten speed transmission, full time four wheel drive with a locking center diff. And then it says full suite of off-road chassis electronics. I'm assuming that's like the trail turn assist stuff. Where yeah, I was going to say it's wheel yes. and yeah. KDSS and that kind of stuff. Yeah. That. So, but engine 3.5 twin turbo V6, um, 409 horsepower, 479 torque. That 10 speed automatic sure. too, I believe. Yeah. That 10 speed automatic. And it weighs like 400 pounds less than the old one. Yeah. Uh, there was there was something about lightweight steel that they put places and mm-hmm. we'll, places. We'll, pro- we'll probably learn more about it and like get the pricing of it later this year because it's yeah. supposed to arrive I think in Q1 of next year and I'm I'm excited to drive it <laughs> I'm looking forward to it yeah I'm oh yeah driving, so um oh yeah let's just jump into the rest of the show mm-hmm. <laughs> you can skip me I want to talk about what you guys did and yeah it, went, what you drove. I'm realizing based on time, like we're going to, yeah. So Robbie and I went to road America, um, the Midwest, uh, mama, when we, when they hold these events, it's not always at road when America. Mama holds the- yeah. Sorry. Um, you you'll get used to it, Ross. It'll be fine. I know. I know. You gotta let me be childish for a few minutes though. But like, so I, and this is where I am complete noob. I've never driven on a track before. Like I've done some autocross oh i should say never like i did laps on fords like handling course up in dearborn Mm -hmm. but that was like only with focus st fiesta st fiesta eco boost oh that's so much fun right and it was an absolute i was giddy the whole time but like it's a handling course it was there was no speed involved in it like i think we were topping out at like 60 because we were supposed to keep it at 35 and nobody kept it at 35 (laughs) So, and that's why when they, when the track worker yelled at me, I said, sorry, a thousand times, even though it wasn't me that he was supposed to be yelling at. Um, there was somebody else who did something way worse, which we're not going to get into. I almost killed somebody, <laughs> but. Um, you almost killed somebody? No, no, oh, no. somebody, somebody else. else turned a Fiesta into like a tripod and almost killed a track worker. And like, oh, Christ, the guy who was yelling at people thought I did it. And so I immediately apologized because I thought I was getting yelled at for going faster at 35 mm. miles an hour. Uh, no, it was the fact that she almost murdered someone. And then later he came back to apologize once he realized it wasn't me. I was like, dude, you're yeah. good. I still wasn't doing what I was supposed to. <laughs> yeah, that's um, not, not recommended. So quick synopsis. Road America has been around since 55. It's 32 feet wide everywhere because a road grader is 16 feet wide back in the 50s and they took two passes and they've never changed that. Um, all of the elevation changes are exactly as the hills were in 1955. <laughs> Again, they didn't do anything. They just literally took two passes and then everything else has been built in the middle of it. Um, it was a blast to drive. I did three laps. Um, they wouldn't let you just run out on track as a complete novice. So you had to do three laps. They called them orientation laps, but I did them with a pro driver for Stellantis and a Dodge Charger SRT Hellcat Red Eye, which is 797 horsepower. And his first lap, I was like, oh, that was pretty quick. And he was like, oh, no, we haven't gone fast at all yet. And then he proceeded to terrify me with the next two laps so um <laughs> i every turn he went to he said words and every turn we went through i memorized words so like like the Aaron sign after turn one you're supposed to point at the r that sets you up for turn three because turn two doesn't exist again why in america do we go one to three with it like why wouldn't it just be two i don't I don't get that, but it's gotta be that's because I'm not a racetrack guy, but I, <laughs> I'm fairly certain that like, that's a thing all the time where they're like, yeah, this doesn't, it's not really a corner. Um, and it happens again on the track, but I don't remember where. So uh, turn one to turn three was a short burst. And they told you to point at the R turn three to the chicane. You go under the Sargento bridge, which has a semi on the side of it. You shoot behind the semi wheels. Uh, after that, a fake, a fake semi, just to, just so we're, yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's a decorative yeah. semi. It's it's not like not, like, I was going to say, Fast and Furious, I'm driving underneath yeah. it. Uh, here, I'll point to where the semi is. It's right there on the bridge. Like that's there the, you go. Um, so you shoot through the bridge, you go through the chicane, and then like way off in the distance over here, there's a billboard, and he's like, point the car at the billboard, and so you would do that, and it would set you up for turn five down here, which was like super hard left. Then you went up the hill towards Corvette Bridge. 
Um, again, left. This one was fun over here because this tree, I told Ross, was dropping leaves all day. And so you could always tell where the racing line was because it was where there were no <laughs> leaves. Like, the leaves had been blown off constantly. Uh, tight left into this one, fun one called the carousel. I think this is Robbie's favorite corner. Yep. Um, I'm okay with it. You're supposed to maintain speed through it. Like you're supposed to like set it. And the guy in the charger was at like 60 something. And I was never that high the rest of the day. Um, I want to say I was in like 54 in one in like the BRZ and that was it, but mm-hmm. it decreases at the end. So it gets, it tightens at the end, but it also falls away. And so as it's tightening, you're supposed to like bring it into the apex, which yeah, that was fun, which then there's a chicane down here that basically the guy I rode with the second part of the day was like, you can do whatever you want here. This isn't part of the track. It doesn't count. <laughs> I was like, that's, that's not great coaching. Like I still want to take a, a proper line through it. He's like, it's just here to slow you down and make sure you don't. I was like, all right, got it that. doesn't count. Great yeah. advice. And so <laughs> everything's made up and the points don't matter. Exactly. It was like, who's line, but not, nah, but, but track driving. So you come back I'm off the confident. chicane. You're supposed to point at the edge of the white wall here. And then you point at the Marshall station and that gets you moved back across down here for Canada corner which was ridiculously hard to get right all day for me. It, mm-hmm. That stretch of track is, it, it's the moment I, in the Durango SRT Hellcat, that's the moment where it, the truck was moving all of a sudden very quickly to the right. And I was like, oh, we're within three feet of grass right now. I'm going to shit myself. Um, and I actually, that was the only time the whole day on track, I actually had a panic moment in my chest. I was like, oh, like, and the, <laughs> and the, the right seat driver noticed it too. And he was like, yeah, you scared yourself, didn't you? I was like, yeah, that's terrifying. So, <laughs> Uh, Canada corner is fun just because it's tight, but then it goes uphill. Um, and this section here, I had a blast hitting all day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the, that's what you call like Thunder Valley, like heading up into yeah. Billy Mitchell. Um, that's an awesome place just to, cause you, you don't even have to like let off the throttle. You just have to, and it's tricky because you're going up uh, to give you an idea. Like uh, if you don't know road America, this track is 4.04 miles long. So it's a long track and as you're coming up out of Canada corner, like into Thunder Valley up that curve, it's pretty much you're driving uphill and you can't really see beyond it, but you have to kind of know where you're going. And then you can just keep the throttle down, come into that last turn at 14 and then barrel up that straightway towards the finish line again. Yeah. So, and then there were the, the end of the uh, concrete wall was for, for 14. He was like, yeah, you should point at this car. I was like, that's off track. Like I'm literally pointed <laughs> off track. He's like, no, no, you, you point at this and then you break. And then it makes the last corner so much easier. And I'm like, All right, cool. I'll trust you guys today. It kept me out of trouble. I didn't wreck. That was my main goal. Um, we're going to start with the Mazda three turbo all wheel drive. Cause I know Robbie and I both drove it because Robbie drove it first. And then I drove it after. <laughs> yeah. I also want to say too, that uh, when I drove it the first time, Chris, Chris, no, I've driven road America. I don't know. I've probably done, I don't know, 20, 30 laps on it. And Chris knew every single command, every prompt, put the car there. He was like my right seat instructor. I was like, I was, I was like, I had a navigation system going. <laughs> it was like at turn five, make sure you aim towards this. So that was pretty fun to have. And I, I still don't know how you memorized all that like that. I was like, because there were thousands of dollars on the line and I didn't even be Beer. responsible for ruining <laughs> anyone's day. Like I can memorize stuff really fast when that's the issue. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, we, uh, we took the Mazda, uh, Mazda 3 Turbo hatchback uh, with all-wheel drive. So it's got that 2.5 liter turbocharged four-cylinder, makes 320 pound-feet of torque on pump gas and 250 horsepower. Uh, I actually had that car before and after the rally for a week just to test it. And it was just this fun off-road, well, not off-road. Off-road. But off-road. Tra- <laughs> <laughs> we didn't be talking CX. We'd be talking CX-30 here. Yeah, <laughs> but it was just this. Mazda has entered the yeah. chat. Um, but it was just as fun on the track as it was on the streets. And what's so great about that car is that, and that and the Miata, which was a, you know, that's a, a orgasmic driving experience in itself. But the Mazda, the Mazda 3 is so, the steering is so precise to turn in is so just sharp and accurate it's just such a you just point that car on the nose of it where you want it to go you floor it and you know the tur- there's a tiny bit of like turbo lag not too much but once you really get up there and the rpms and the power band it's just the car loves to go forward and that all-wheel drive just holds it planted it's it's such an enjoyable car to drive i just wish they offered it with a manual they don't offer it with a manual anymore that would be the the 
like home run of all home runs. Yeah. Like Mazda interior turbo, that much power and a stick mm-hmm. all wheel drive. Subaru would be absolutely crushed. Exactly. And you can get a six speed with the non turbo version and front wheel drive. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, cause like the, the, the Mazda three, I mean, you look at like the, the Veloster and the GTI, the Gulf R, the, um, Civic Type R. I mean, the the the, the Mazda three turbo hatch is such like a gentleman's like tuner. It's just like a nice like proper modern adults like hot hatch. And I mean, without without three pedals, it's a hoot to drive. And I just oh, I would I'd, I'd give a kidney to have a third pedal in that car. It's and, so good. And you fit your road bike in it. That's true. True. Yeah. And that's the, the that's the beauty of a, a hatchback. I I actually at this event we actually did a thing called uh, Four Miles of Fitness that. Kia sponsored and we were able to after after our first day we were able to drive around ride around the track on our bikes or run it or walk it and my my old vintage uh Panasonic road bike fit perfectly in that Mazda easier you know what it was easier to fit a road bike in the Mazda 3 hatch than it was the CX-9 that's yeah just to give you kind of a comparison I I will also say that I rode in the front passenger seat at six foot four with the road bike behind me mm-hmm. I, I won't use the comfortable word but i did <laughs> fit yeah just long enough to have some fries and watch some airplanes land but yeah, it was <laughs> <laughs> it's it's an excellent car and i'm so glad that we that both of us were able to actually take it out on the track yeah and it was fun robbie apex is early i apex late uh which is why at 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 the end of his lap i was like hey can i drive now just because like i felt like um the feeling I was getting is that we were there was much more um, weight in his corners because of how early we we're entering. So it was yeah, just I like to I like to attack him early, just yeah. get in there and mm. you know well, floor coming out. <laughs> and they were also like never touch a single rumble strip. So we we, <laughs> we couldn't really attack the corners because every time they're like, if you hit this rumble strip, you're getting thrown over there. So don't hit yeah. the rumble strip. So yeah, that's a fun um, end your day. Right. So that. I enjoyed driving the Mazda mainly because I drove it with Robbie. <laughs> the car I absolutely adored was the BRZ, the new BRZ. Mm, that was the first one you brought up to me it after the trip. Fucking rocks. Yeah, that um, car is, they they did such a good job like just executing it. It's so balanced. It's so nimble. And we the one we had had the automatic. It was, wasn't yeah. even the manual really and the and automatic like, <laughs> yeah and i didn't even use the paddle shifters when i took Either the BRZ I. on the track and it was fine it was such an enjoyable little car you could just oh you could just drive the hell out of it it was a hmm. great great That's, time i did use the sport button yep so it, it, it did tend to uh it didn't rev hang but like it it stayed in power bands um there is a track button I did not use it because I track button turns off traction control on a car I'm unfamiliar with on a track I'm not super familiar with. But it was also people. raining too a little bit. Oh really? Yeah, it, it did start to sprinkle, but I drove it earlier in the day. But like the BRZ was the first car that I got in uh, on the track and after riding in the Charger, and I didn't immediately notice that I was missing 500 horsepower mm-hmm. because it was it was Peppy's not the right phrase. It, it's it's not underpowered anymore. Like it, the, the it's just balanced. Them. Yeah. Like it, it's just balanced. The amount they, of they have the chassis has. that chassis is so tuned in. And I mean, it's, I love the BRZ and the, and the fact, you know, what makes it so great is that car costs less than $28,000. Yeah. I mean, you the have premium and it's still there. Yeah. You, you have a perfectly track capable car. For less than 30 grand that you can drive around every day. I mean, it was, yeah, that was such a fun car to drive. And the other thing is at six foot four with a helmet, Mm -hmm. I comfortably sat in the BRZ. I could not get in the Miata. Yeah, the Miata was a little tricky. I feel like I was, I was able to get it and, oh man. I did, nasty, I did nasty things driving that car. That was the so seat fun. does not the seat does not lower enough for me, but mm-hmm. that's why there's the tall man mod. Yeah. <laughs> Take the roof off. That's drop one the, of them. Yeah. And you drop the seat. That's the other yeah, you, that's yeah. the other one. Yeah, I've heard about exactly. that. Which they don't want you to take the roof off and then go drive on a racetrack. Mm-hmm. No. Well, you gotta have a roll cage. Clears and, yeah. This, the broomstick test, then yes, the roof can go off. But at your height, yeah. That ain't working. 
And so. now I understand why you bought a Miata, Ross, and why I am struggling that I don't have a Miata. I think the I think the lesson of the hey, story man. that Chris that Chris and I you know walked away from that day is that you know you have Mazda three hatch turbo, the BRZ, the uh, the Miata, all, all of them have under three hundred horsepower, and mm-hmm. they are perfect to drive on the track. You do and- not need all that. It's they're just such great little because- basic fun cars you actually drive them instead yes. of just try to contain them yeah like, like the cars that weigh four thousand pounds exactly and the straights are long like there's room mm-hmm. to like rev them out and it was still like i wasn't sitting there going like like i wasn't trying to like i was like where are we going next because i'm getting to the next corner quickly like front straight of lime rock is a hell of a lot shorter than the straights of road america and an nc miata will do 110 on the front straight that's not oh, slow. Man. that's what i that's what i got the the uh miata up to i got up to about buck 10 buck 12 on that and second it, second straight yeah and multiply it by like 10 to 20 percent and that's how fast mm-hmm. you feel like you're going mm-hmm. so i don't know people who don't get it never will and will continually say it's slow dude you know but it's whatever. so much fun Fuck them. i i was laughing just from having so much fun driving, just flooring it and throwing through all the gears, just having so, I know like, you know, you don't want to, you know, beat on a car, obviously, but like, oh man, I miss Show it. Who's there. boss? There yeah. was, <laughs> there was an Alpha Quadrifoglio there mm-hmm. and it only lasted three laps before Robbie and I were both in the pit lane or the paddock when it came back in and we watched the guy bring it to a halt and a puff of brake dust came out of the front caliper when he parked it yes. and they were like that one's done on track yeah and i took it out on the street uh, a couple hours later and i mean the the, the julia quadrifoglio is a, a it's, it's a gorgeous car it is intoxicatingly to drive it sounds like a pissed off angry hornet um but yeah i was i was surprised that the brakes didn't pull up that long whereas the mazda three <laughs> Three, you and I drove it very, very hard. Other people drove it. And for the three days, four or five days, I had the car after the event, the brakes were completely fine. You know, I want to give them benefit of the doubt for something like that, because I mean, did anybody inspect the condition of that car before it got there? Yes, they probably should have. Mm -hmm. Had it been, you know, how many miles were on it? Had it been in the hands of journalists for six or eight months, you know, with, without them changing the pads or touching anything checking the fluid so i don't know that's still that's disappointing but mm-hmm. anyway, I, want to, mm-hmm. I, I want to hear about uh some off-roady stuff so yeah that's what the show's all about chris, start, take, chris right, take yeah. it away chris I, chris uh chris got his uh outback wilderness drive I'm staying with yes. subaru um <laughs> this thing like we've had robbie on and talked about it who else has talked about it Is, we've had other I think people jeff jeff Flucker did Glocker. jeff definitely yep. I think even Johnny talked about it. A Johnny little bit too. briefly. I think they all undersold it. Hmm. Um, well, I don't think Robbie undersold it. Robbie's definitely always been a fan. Um, it, the only, so there was an off-road course that had a couple of, it had one uphill that was just kind of a table cross and down. You could use the descent control. There was another one where you went up and on the other side, it was some fairly decent sized rocks. Um, there was an articulation thing that was designed to get all four wheels off the ground at any one point. Like it was like a, a big pillar, then a mm-hmm. gap, then another pillar, then like just basically walking through it. Um, there was a mud puddle. Uh, there was some, I call them whoops in my notes, but like they weren't desert whoops. They were just kind of like some, they were, it, maybe a six foot gap in between them. Like somebody went way too fucking fast through those and dug in the front lower valance of the car and kind of popped some trim pieces out. And so by the, and by the time I got to it, it had been through the course a number of times. Mm -hmm. Um, The, the super rep Dominic was very, very nice to talk. He rode with me and I wanted him to, I was like, tell me about the car. Like it, it, it was very much kind of a, I don't want to say like it's East coast off-roading, but it was like, it was wet and muddy and there were a lot of rocks kind a lot of, of leaves through. it looks like yeah right well this is not the off-road course this is just robbie showing oh. me pretty spots oh. to take pictures i didn't take any pictures of the off-road course i was a horrible horrible journalist that day because i was having so much fun trying to get in everything i wanted driving impressions from everything i was like plus we're audio we're like we're gonna talk um 
right. to the 12 people who watch on YouTube, thank you. Uh, no, that's that's a lie. There's like 80 of them. Um, <laughs> but somebody went, it, when I got to the, the, the hill that had the, the, the bigger rocks on the other side, mm-hmm. he was like, hey, man, can we go around this time? And I was like, yes, we can go around. I don't want to damage your car anymore. But I 100% think or know that I could have gone down the backs of the hill without damaging the car anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, we just played it safe, which I'm fully on board playing it safe. Normally when it comes off roading, um, you got to drive home normally. So, and somebody was mm-hmm. driving this one back. Like all of these had to go back somewhere. There were no trailers that I saw. Actually, that might be a lie. I saw one trailer. Um, but so the, the kind of the, the, the features of it, like it's the turbo four, very gutsy. It, it, it had a little bit of a twitchy accelerator when they're, so uh, Stellantis had some guys from Jeep Jamboree come out to like spot us on some of the harder sections of rock. And they did find some sections of the rocks in the woods. Um, I have a video of the TRX trying to get through that in the woods and the rocks. And it's just, it's, it's on my, it's already on my Instagram. I'll share it um, again to the podcast channel. The TRX does not belong in the woods. Johnny already told a story <laughs> following the Rivians. It doesn't belong in the woods. Like it was just ridiculous. But this truck was, or this, this car was great in the woods. It was fantastic. It rode comfortably. The engine's great. They did re-gear it um, to help with, with torque. Um, and then the, the one thing that the, the rep point out, Dominic point out, was that X mode stays on longer. So X mode is like the, holy fuck, we're in the worst terrain ever. Snow, sand, mud, whatever it is. And there, there were options on the touchscreen. You could say, no, I'm in snow. No, I'm in mud. And normally, in like the ascents and the Imprezas, when you're in X mode, it's really just to get you unstuck. Well, in the outback wilderness, it stays on longer and at higher speeds. Um, so there was a stretch where eventually I actually got to accelerate. <laughs> I didn't. I I I felt like I puttered around the off road course because there were fairly decent sized rocks everywhere, and I didn't want to break anything. Mm-hmm. Um, even in my own stuff, I would have gone this pace. Like it was. It was not. It's not desert running. It was definitely not like out west where you're running on yeah. the roads. It was very technical. It was very. And it wasn't like overly technical. It was just like, pay attention to what you're doing. Don't fuck shit up. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there was one time where I could like burst with the X mode. And he was like, see, this is the speed. We were up to like 35 miles an hour. He's like, this point, it would have kicked off at 15. So it, and it was still an X mode. It lasted. I love the Geo Landers. Um, I love the Yokohamas on it. I didn't really, the, the articulation one where you kind of went across the thing. I had at one point, all four wheels in the air and it just moved right through it. <laughs> um, and the 392 Wrangler, I like was ramping stuff. I couldn't, I couldn't get the lockers to engage on the 392 Wrangler when I got there, which was kind of weird. Um, they do, they do that. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't say that, but that that isn't kind of a known. Entity. So I did ask him because it's not every day that I get to talk to somebody who's the director of communications for Super North America about cross tracks, and I was like, why do we not have a turbo on the cross track? And it was the most Japanese answer I've ever heard because what Subaru North America said to Subaru Japan, or I guess you should just say to Subaru, why don't we have a turbo on the cross track? Their response was why we sell all of them that we can make. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a very, very uh, I would say it's a very like industry appropriate yeah. answer. <laughs> so yeah. just because we want them as enthusiasts doesn't mean we're going to get it. Mm-hmm. Did you like the uh, trail camera on the front of the Outback Wilderness? Did I did. Use that at all? I did use it in the on the trail camera on this the the Wrangler and the Bronco. I love that they even on the forward facing cameras they now have your tire tracks mm-hmm. superimposed. Mm-hmm. So you can look at a rock on there and say, "Is my tire track going to hit that rock, or am I does it appear to be inches of separation?" If there is inches of separation, you're not going to hit it. In my mm-hmm. short experience. I don't want to, I don't want to have somebody text me later and be like, homie, I just crashed my car because you said I would uh, <laughs> legally, <laughs> not, offer not legal, legal advice. advice here. Like, uh, <laughs> my I, like trail camera. I, I like the seats. Everything is like wipeable. The headliner's black. So you can throw crap in it. If you hit the headliner, you're not going to make a mark. Like it did feel, it felt like a nice cave. It was kind of a wet, rainy day. And so it was just like this warm little cocoon <laughs> of, and it was, it was great. Those things kind of roll. I mean, they're just so good at everything, you know, like I think people 
and this is just a blanket statement I'm throwing out there, but they over project what they anticipate themselves doing, Mm -hmm. whether it's, you know, track or off-road. And this is, I know we've talked about this like to no end, but the Outback Wilderness is the right off-roader for 95% of off-roaders, the same way Ridgeline is the same, is the right pickup for 95% of pickup buyers. 100%. I I 200% agree with you on that. Because like some of those, some of those other vehicles we were off-roading at the uh, off-road course, um, you know, it, I, I like how Chris put it. It's like the TRX does not belong in the woods because it doesn't. No, the TRX don't. doesn't belong. It's fun and it's dumb, but it, we don't need that. And and even even like the they had the Ford had their new Raptor there. There was a there's the Bronco. There was a uh, Forerunner uh, Trail, I believe. Um, and like yeah, those were all. You know, they did a great job going through the off-road course, but guess what? The Subaru was fine and it did it perfectly. That's literally all you need. Yep. Like, the the only obstacle I didn't do was that of courtesy. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Which, and even then I still think I would have handled it just fine. But mm-hmm. I'd love to run one of those things up of Black Bear Pass. So hey, oh. Subaru, <laughs> if you're listening, let's freaking do it. Well, hopefully, hopefully uh, you know, the Outback Wilderness is out and they're selling, I think I, I'd have to check it out, but I was talking to um, Jessica Tolman with Subaru and she actually was able to give me the take rate of how many people are getting the Outback Wilderness. I'll have to find that and look it up. Oh, and it has to be guys an answer. It's gotta yeah, be. it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty high. And um, if you go on Facebook, there's like a Subaru Outback, like owner's club or something like that. I'm a part of it. I don't have a super out back. I just feel liar. You know, it's kind you, of that FOMO. FOMO I, do have a, 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 I do have a, a Subaru ish wagon, um, but it's been really, really cool seeing people post photos of like, hey, here's this new Outback Wilderness I got. And they're like posting them like in the woods or like off in the desert, like doing things. And I'm like, and this they, is so cool. This is like, this is such great energy with this car. That, excited about an Outback. Yeah. Yeah, and then we have the Forester, the Forester Wilderness coming out. I am so excited yeah, for the Forester Wilderness. They just need, they got to put that turbo engine in the Forester Wilderness. Then, I agree. Then, great. Oh, no. I, I would even consider buying one. Oh, no. All right, let's move on. Let's move on. I, 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 for the audio listener, I have the video of the TRX in the woods up right now. Oh, and the, no. And the Jeep Chamber guys, like, pulling saplings out of the way to allow the truck a little more room. <laughs> It's it and the Raptor are the only two trucks ahead of three point turn at this corner. Like, not surprising yeah. they're unwieldy in a situation like yeah, that. Yeah, it's it is not a, a wood <laughs> truck. Like, it's not. There's so much more tech in that truck for amazing stuff. Uh, I jokingly I, on the on a on a mama post, I was like, "So, are we putting in jumps next year for the Raptor and the TRX?" <laughs> Nobody responded. I, I, <laughs> Chris, I was I was the same thing with you, man. When I when I drove that TRX through the woods, I think I spent more time being nervous about clipping a mirror, and then you know I think I did so many three point turns to try and and but it's I mean the thing is like with those giant those giant tires and that that ridiculous suspension, you could go over some of those rocks at way quicker speeds than some of the other ones, and the the, the TRX would be like. Huh, nothing. Yeah. Huh, nothing. So, but then on the open part, when you're like heading towards the hill, I like slap that traction control button off and just, <laughs> just so, I probably gave an owl a heart attack with that scream that so, supercharger one. I, Same noise. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna <laughs> jump, I'm gonna jump down in my, my notes to the TRX because like I didn't drive it in the woods because I, I knew what it was going to be. I was like, that's not a good representation of the truck. Like but I drove it on the road and even on the road, I was like, this is too big. Like yeah. an H1 ra- uh, Hummer is 86 inches wide. The TRX is 88 inches wide. I've looked it up multiple times. <laughs> it's not, it's facts. Like it's two inches wider than a Hummer. Mm-hmm. And oh, well, Texas thinks you're a Hummer for sissies. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, but like, some of those roads around road America, like they're decent highway. It's two lane highway. And it feels mm-hmm. like it is in both lanes. Yeah. Even if you have like the right wheels in the grass, it feels like it's in both lanes mm-hmm. still. Like it's so big. I, I think I've reached my old man phase. I don't need a supercharger wine. Yeah. 
it's giggly fun, but it's at the end of the day, I'd rather for five minutes. Like, yeah. At the, at the end of the day, I'd rather have a vehicle that's capable off-road and gets more than six miles per gallon. Right. So. And it's, so it's terrible cast mileage. Like, like supercharger's loud as shit. Like segways. Segways. Like the Frontier Pro 4X. Yeah, let's talk about the Frontier. <laughs> I did not drive it, so Chris, this one's all on you. Oh, shit. Okay, so, Ross. And I just I just put 750 miles on one. How? So, oh, yeah, that's right. You did have one. Can, can you describe the steering feel of that truck? So when the... When the first of two got dropped off, the guy said to me, this is the heaviest steering you'll experience on a, on a new vehicle. And I kind of like, was like, no, I don't believe that. And I got in it and backed it up. I was like, holy fucking shit. It, it's unbelievable how much weight there is to that steering. Like, comical. I don't, I don't understand it. I checked is the it tire still pressure. Is it still completely hydraulic? Is there, is it, <sighs> I, I didn't. I feel like it's got some electronic assist this time. Or maybe they did keep it hydraulic. It's heavier than the old truck. It, it's, huh. I, I, so I drove it on the, I drove it around road America to take pictures and stuff like that. Like if you could see the the back shot of this picture, it looks like I'm in the middle of nowhere. No, that's I'm a fantastic the, shot, by the way. Thank you. I'm, yeah, I'm in the middle awesome of picture. the track trying to make it look like I'm in the Scottish Highlands. Or Baja like, storm. <laughs> yeah. But like just driving it here, I was like, good Lord, turning his heart. Like it's it's, a lot in two wheel drive. Yeah. Even it's, and in two wheel drive, like the rear axle was doing stuff as I was trying to make tight corners. Like it was like hopping a little bit, like, like why do I wheel hop at five miles an hour? Like it was, it, hmm. it's so much better than the old frontier. But then when you immediately compare it to everything else that's new and out right now, you're like, Oh guys, <laughs> you're close. Mm-hmm. It's better. Yeah. yeah. But so the steering like was super you... heavy. <laughs> um, the driver leg room is non-existent for me. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like Ravi, you're right. Like even at the bottom of the adjustment, like, I was like, why is this hitting my legs? Mm-hmm. I like the oh, interior. I, I like that. the seats. <laughs> um, me and Robbie have the same initial. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, I wrote that. <laughs> oh, you did that? Yeah, yeah I've not, I've, 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 I've honestly not. I've not driven the new Frontier yet, so I okay. have to mute um, myself. I did like that he said that the door cards can fit thirty-two ounce now jeans because that is what everyone in the outdoor world like. That's the standard of like, I got my water bottle, I can fit it in the door card. Like, bam, mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. was cool. Um, I did the front skid plate hit some of the rocks. Um, it did go through. I did get the rear locker engaged to go through the articulation stuff. Um, I could never really get the the downhill, uh, the descent control mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. work correctly. I got it on and it would just flash at me. And I was like, all right, since the hill. And then it would go solid for doing that. Right. Mm-hmm. And it would never low? just stay on. You were in four low. Yes. And it did. Huh, that's weird. Yeah. So it, that might just have been, that's definitely user error is where I'm attributed to because mm-hmm. clearly I don't understand exactly how it's supposed to work in that truck. Um, so I like the interior. It looked like it was really easy to wipe down. Um, the four low shifting was great. The forward facing camera. So when you turn it on to four low, it automatically turns on, right? Well, when you're in four high and you're like, hey, I want this. I was like, oh, I couldn't figure it out. And then the rep showed me the button and I was like, I'm dumb as shit. It's <laughs> literally a button just below the, the multimedia system that says, camera so that's i guess a, I can't that's a see. really good feat that's a really nice feature though that it comes on when you're for low automatically right. I wish more vehicles had something like that but then i want to know who their uh camera supplier is because the resolution again i'm hopping out of all of these things as we're going throughout the day it's a- appalling the resolution on their camera backup camera too dude was yeah, it I, look, I took multiple pictures of it and was like i think was... I, I wrote a comment at one point about it being like N60 or no, I, I wrote it, it looked eight PS2 like it looked, yeah. and everybody else is on PS5. Did you think it was worse than the because I think the Subaru Outback Wilderness's Ford Trail Cam has really poor resolution, unfortunately. Do you feel like it was worse than that? Subaru, yeah, the Subaru was better than this. This was by wow. far. Okay. This was like looking at yeah, Gran Turismo not, 2 when the rest of us are playing Forza Horizon, whatever number we're on now, four or five. Oh, like, that's a sh- that's a shame. Yeah, I think we're and, on. Yeah, fine. I think it's five. Um, but like, it's a good truck, though. 
It's just mm-hmm. the steering's heavy. It's it's. I don't want to just like. And in this image, you can see nothing's hanging below the frame. I did scrape the frame. Like I hate. I didn't hurt any components. Like that is a drag great over the top of stuff. <laughs> it's just a good truck. It's like they made it feel like a truck and not a gimmick, right. which is so easy to get carried away with these days. But yeah, mm-hmm. I liked it. it That's a great way to put it, Russ. Yeah. It's, so, it's, okay. it's not a money grab. They were definitely trying to like build a truck. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to go back to 392 Wrangler. Yes. Um, I'm trying to find my image. Chris, yeah. when you held your finger up just then, it blurted out. It was really Did it really? So it was like <laughs> over the fist. Yeah. Fear me. Didn't I yeah. not put, the, oh, I know where I put it. It's in the other Google Drive. I'm excited to get my hands on a Frontier. I'm supposed to get one in December. So I'm hoping I can either take it like cross country skiing or camping or something like that. Or if we have snow, maybe do a little donut making or something. But you just volunteered yourself to come back on the show and talk about oh! it. Oh! Since, since by then, all three of us will have had time with it. <laughs> That'll be fun to compare. Yeah. Yeah. Compare notes. All right. That's so, a truck. 392 a Wrangler. I like it a lot. I did. This is from uh, Larry. Sent me an image. It's me coming down the rockier sections here, which you can't see the rocks because nice. they're under the yeah, truck. Those were, those were some big boulders. Yeah. They were, they were good size. So, my favorite part of this truck was I literally just putted around and like would just blip the accelerator whenever I had to roll over something. And it was just, just like, all right, cool. like it just, it literally was in, it was in, I think it's always in four auto. Mm-hmm. In it is full time four wheel drive. Yeah. Um, it was great. Like I drove it, around, I drove it around the property a little bit. Um, I took some pictures in the woods with the leaves again and then drove it. I, I was the first one, like we got to the off-road course and you know, you know, when they're like the stores open on like Black Friday or whatever, and people rush in. <laughs> I sped walk. <laughs> this. Chris was shoving run. people over for that right. two hundred dollar TV. Yeah, I did not run, but I definitely sped walk towards this vehicle, and that's why it's clean in this picture. Because I know every other picture after this was after I drove it. Like, because I mm-hmm. around the corner of this was a mud puddle, and they put photographers near the mud puddle, and so I definitely sent it water everywhere uh, uh, because you had to. What's it called? Hydro. Hydro lock? So, no, it's the the hood scoop is like oh, the hood. Oh, hydro sorry. guide, I believe. Hydro, ga- hydro guide. Hydro guide. Um, um, I, I was thinking of the scene in Jingle All the Way when they're like fighting to get through the store. <laughs> right. So I need that turbo man. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> exactly what it was. Um, oh. I did drive it. Uh, Robbie showed me a fun little gravel road uh, up the back of the property, which I, I basically created my own little like test loop the first day. Once I got oh, done good. With, like, the three track cars. So I drove everything on the same, nice. same road. This thing on the gravel was this thing and the Subaru Outback were hilarious in the gravel, like the torque and both being all wheel drive. Like I would just kind of slide and just keep going. <laughs> and I had so much fun, but the suspension, I'm fully, I, I love this truck except for the price tag. Well, that's got the 35s on that's it, right? That's an extreme. This is so, the extreme reason. Yeah. This is 83.5 is what this oh! is. That, that's steep. <sighs> like that is up there. But, and you're, and so it's 83.5 and then you're going to spend another 80 grand in gas as you own this thing. <laughs> the fuel economy is terrible. I, mean, oh, I, I honestly, I honestly have been out of touch with the, the Wrangler 392 since it came out. So I did not realize that's how much it cost until Um, you said that. Wow. Speaking of the fuel economy, Chris, I have to ask that was that a typo or was that intentional in the show notes? Fuel economy with a three. Was that like a Freudian slip or was that? (laughs) No, no, that's just, uh, I made a mistake, but yeah, it's terrible. Like it's all three miles per gallon. Yeah, no, it's definitely more than that. But like, again, it, it was good in the woods because it's, it's just a Wrangler. Like, so it's, it's small, the, those tires, the rocks were not, not an issue. Like it went over everything super easy. Mm-hmm. Um, it was great in the whoops. It's an amazing noise. <laughs> the muffler or the, the exhaust button to like turn it off does work. Like you can, even at idle, it's a noticeable difference mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. from the driver's seat when you turn on the, the quiet mode. Um, I don't know why you would leave it in loud mode all the time, please. I have, I have one complaint about the styling of it. So I love how it looks. It's, it's very sleeper looking. I love the 35s on it. You know, I, I think that those bronze wheels look super good, 
but I wish they would have gone with different 392 badging for the hood scoop because it looks like they yanked those right off of like the 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 charger yeah. or the challenger like I wish they oh. would have done some kind of cool like retro cheap like font or something like that or, mean, or maybe even not even have the 392 <laughs> on it like make it even more sleep uh, bronze bronze toe hooks is also what you get mm-hmm. yep yeah. saw that you mean bronze they toes, like to it you mean stellantis likes parts bending for mm. things they do <laughs> do very much it's a great looking vehicle i mean mm. and that shot chris I'm, I'm envious of your photography skills once again because that's a that's a poster shot. You showed me the spot, so I did show you the spot, but I, I didn't take the photo. <laughs> my, my favorite part is I put it up on my Instagram, and like seventeen people liked it. I'm like, what the hell? This is fucking great. <laughs> but that's everything I've ever done on Instagram. So I, Move I do want to kind of focus us because I know we're running out of time on Ross. Um, so that truck was eighty grand. If you don't get the extreme recon, it's still seventy grand, right? I also drove the Bronco Wild Track. Um, Sasquatch. So I don't I don't remember exactly what wild track gets you. Um I think I took photos in the same spot with the Bronco. Uh that was the red one, right? Yeah, it was the red one. Uh, was, yeah, so was cool. They had they had the wild track in red. I did take it in a similar spot. Um this one's not as good. I don't like it now. Okay, that's better. It's at least a low angle. Um it has so this was the two seven EcoBoost. Um, the the rear of this truck makes noise. So what? yeah, um, while I was driving this truck around the property, like the back of it rattled. There oh, like no, panel rattleage. Yeah, like I, I thought I could you meant feel, like diff. No, I could feel like roof movement. Like there's noise Mm. coming from the back, squeaking, rubbing type stuff. There's none of that in the 392 Wrangler. I I, I did put the engine in quiet mode to suss it out because I was like, is the engine covering this? Um, Mm -hmm. And the 392 Wrangler had like that cloth full soft top. So follow up. Is that one of the new hard tops or is that one of the fuck hard tops? I don't know. I I didn't have a chance to clarify. Um, it was something that I, like, I got in it and it was the first time I'd been in a Bronco. So I wanted to experience it. So it's, it's definitely wider than the Wrangler. Um, there is noticeably more space between the driver and the front passenger. Mm -hmm. Um, so the 392 Wrangler is a Rubicon. So you have the front and rear locker and the rear locker right on the switch. And I had difficulty getting that engaged in this. I got to a point where I needed to engage the locker and i was in mud and sand mode and i reached up and hit the button and the locker was immediately on in the back Mm -hmm. and when i was done with it i reached up and hit the button again and the locker was immediately off so like there was some ease of use to those things that was definitely easier in that opportunity the bronco also has the trail turn assist stuff you can reach up and hit the button if you need a tight corner then you take your steering wheel all the way to full lock and then Sam from Ford said, apply more accelerator than you think is necessary. Oh, I'd be so nervous about that. Oh, well, man, that sounds I, like so much shit to go wrong. Right. So I, I did it twice. I did it once to the left and once to the right. And both mm-hmm. times it was flawless. Even though you're applying way more horse accelerator than you think you need, the truck is still regulating it. So um, it wasn't like a burst of, of speed and movement. It was just like kind of a slow metering around. Um, so there's definitely some electronic wizards doing stuff in there does that trail turn assist because i didn't i didn't when i drove the bronco too i drove the black diamond one that they had um and i didn't use the trail turn assist but this did were you able to see if that trail turn assist like automatically turns off at some point or do you have to manually tap it i we were physically turning on and off i think that's what i thought i think if you leave it on Mm -hmm. you then have to take the steering to full lock for it to like as a oh, secondary engager there. that makes sense so like headed sense. up black bear i that'd be awesome like mm-hmm. that, those are some tight corners mm-hmm. um when i set the parking brake in this and then like got out to like take photos i set it on a weird angle the truck did not budge at all which is something that when i've been on a jeep and i've been on a weird angle or something i leave it in gear and i set the thing like my tj would always slip just a little bit yeah. It, like it was noticeable. I was like, oh, I'm a rock right now. Like it's, <laughs> it is not moving, which I like that a lot. Um, 
the steering was kind of heavy-ish, but like at speed, I would want that. I would want a little heavier mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. as I'm in a higher vehicle. Um, the cameras in this thing are ridiculously clear. The forward, yeah. the front, and the back. They were. Oh yeah. I was like, can I like? I want to like film a movie. And the the tire things were great as well. Um, there's so much more room in it than there's in the Wrangler. I just feel like there's just more space. I don't really like the way the mirrors look, but that's completely subjective. Like I don't like. They're also stuff. very loud on the road. Are they? See, I didn't drive it on yeah, the road. They're very loud on the road. I was kind of surprised by that. I mean, it wouldn't be a. It obviously wouldn't be like a deal breaker for me, but mm -hmm. yeah, I took it out on the road and I was like, wow, like this is, I was like, where is that coming from? I'm like, oh, it's the mirrors. But at the Brock, it's such, I mean, look at it. It's such like, it's, it, it's so much character, so much personality. It's such a, such a cool vehicle. It's, yeah. The looks are going to sell the truck for 90% of the people who are going to own it for half of the lease term and get rid of it. Right. <laughs> and so this is where, like, I don't know if, I think this is like a lukewarm take. Okay. I think a Bronco with the two seven and the Sasquatch package is like 80% of a 392 Wrangler for 30 grand less. Ooh. Yeah, probably. Like, and I, I put it in, I put it in Slack channel. I was put it out to other people and they're like, no, nah, that fucking 392 is a beast. I'm like, yes, I understand that. But if we're talking like the numbers are definitely different, mm -hmm. but we're talking about like drivability on road. Everybody who said anything about the 392 Wrangler is like, it's fucking terrifying at highway speeds. That's even a regular, even a regular Wrangler is terrifying at highway speeds. Right. And the and JL definitely. is the best platform at highway speeds. Like that is the pinnacle of, and I know Rap, Bronco Raptor's coming. Like I know that there's going to be a Bronco that exists, the Hippogriff. I will maintain it's, that. It's, it's, still confirmed, my it's confirmed for 2022. <laughs> it's on the consumer side. Call it a Hippogriff shit. forever. Um, I, I, I know that that one's coming to like boost horsepower and all that fun stuff. But like, I think just getting the two seven, like the enjoyment of what you want there. Yes. It does not sound the same. If you just want to giggle and waste gas, fine. Mm -hmm. I really think that two seven is great. And it's, and I know it's, IFS like it was I, I saw a picture today with the Bronco with the two broken front shafts and both wheels pointing oh yeah I saw that too with arms wide open uh arms wide open. <laughs> I I had a so I drove the um the black diamond which has the 2.3 liter and it had the manual with the crawl gear and everything and I that's what I forgot yeah I loved it it was so to me it it honestly it reminded me so much of that Suzuki Jimny that I had in Iceland so many years ago. It was like, it wasn't fast. It, it was bumpy. It was loud. It had these big clunky throws. It was just this like simple, like minimalistic, like tough four by four. And I just like fell in love with it in the like 20 minutes that I drove it. And now I really want one, but I probably, if I ordered one, I probably wouldn't get one until 2026 or something. So this give them this, give them a year to work a couple things out. Yeah. yeah, this video is the crawl gear engaged on a. I mean, it was, oh it was, yeah, on the spot. It was a loose surface, like it wasn't. Mm. It would, and it's got a little angle to it. But like, I never touch the accelerator. I literally pulled the clutch out, and it walked up this hill at three miles an hour, eight hundred RPMs by itself. That's really cool. It's pretty like freaking it, cool. And it and I use it to descend. Hit this. I didn't use the hill descent control. I just put it crawl gear. And again, mm -hmm. never had to touch the brake. Just let it come down to the bottom. So great, when you get to the top of it, when you get to the top of it, I would assume you just like shift into first. Uh, I actually stalled it when I got to the top of it. I, oh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while since I've driven a manual, but I, I got to the top and I was like, all right, so come out of crawl gear. Let's go into first and oh, all mm -hmm. right, we'll turn it back on and keep going. After that, it's fine. But like, there is the, the the ring on the manual shifter to get into. You got to pull it up to get into reverse, and you got to pull it up to get into crawl. Mm -hmm. Subaru. Yeah, you can't accidentally start and crawl. Mm -hmm. You have to be mm -hmm. conscious of it. Um, Such a fun vehicle. And I'm excited for the Everglades that's coming out with the snorkel and the winch on it. Yeah. Cool. That's so going to be cool. My only comment on that 2.3 is I drove it like I drove my first 88 Honda Accord in my 
felt like I'd heard the engine loud enough, I would shift. And so I was shifting at like 2,300 RPMs. Like it was not <laughs> like to me, just, and again, it's maybe it's my old manness. Like the engine sounded loud and tired time to mm-hmm. shift. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was shifting super low, but I still enjoyed driving and it was a good, mm-hmm. good little truck. Yeah. I would um, love that in two door format, that exact same Bronco in two door format. Maybe dreamy. So the only other like one-to-one comparison that I purposely did was I drove the Hyundai Santa Cruz. Mm-hmm. And then I got in the Ford Maverick XL hybrid. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. We get, let's, let's do those two real quick. And then I got to yeah. <laughs> call it. Cause so, we can talk about this all night. Ross is fast as Ma- Maverick I'm, had I'm looking at my homework, <laughs> lots of wide, like lots of width, lots of airy space inside. How physically big is the thing? I passed one in New Hampshire, like going the opposite direction and have. So, otherwise. so Wade feel, um, who writes for a couple of different outlets, a uh, great journalist. He, if you look on his Twitter, I think, oh, maybe it was Facebook. He posted a photo of the Maverick next to a Ford Ranger that he actually drove to the track. And I think it looked a little bit bigger. I think it's definitely longer than mm. the Ranger. And we're talking like the, the previous Ranger that got discontinued like 10 years ago. Um, it's, I mean, it's definitely, it, it, it's small, but I don't think it's, that small per se it definitely feels like driving like that previous generation ranger um okay. oh. sizing wise and yeah i i really like the maverick too i was not a fan of how the interior was kind of just really cheap but that's what makes the truck cheap and ford did do a good job of taking some of those plastics and adding like a little bit of a texture to it to make it look higher end um it's, I mean, it's a, it's a great truck. I, I love what they're doing with it. Yeah, here you go. That's a great photo to compare it. Yeah. Oh, that's am- that's awesome, actually. Mm-hmm. So, I, again, like, it's bigger than the Santa Cruz. Like, mm-hmm. really? It's, yeah, it's bigger than the Santa Cruz by quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd say Maverick is probably, I, again, I don't, I don't have the specs in front of me, but I would think that Maverick is probably a couple inches longer yeah. and wider. I do think the Santa Cruz is taller, though. Is it? It felt like I, I felt so. like I had more headroom than the Maverick. Like I would, yeah, yeah, I'd have to, I'd have to look at the specs, but I, I mean, the that's Maverick just, has a lower floor. Mm-hmm. That would make sense. Also, I just want to point out that I love that that Ranger on the left uh, is missing its Ford badge. <laughs> it's, it's just so it's so faded, you can't see it yeah. anymore. It's still there. <laughs> is it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ford's still there. Um, that's funny. So when I drove the hybrid Maverick, I felt like I could hear everything squeak in the truck. Like I felt mm-hmm. like I, it's noisy. Like an it electric is, even, or like all the time. Like well, it was in. So when you're at low speeds, it's just the battery, right? Um, and then as you got mm-hmm. higher speeds or bigger power gain, then the then the four cylinder would kick in. And then then I still like felt like on the the gravel road I would drive with all of them on. The the Santa Cruz I just drove it fine, engine noise it whatever. But like when I drove it in the Maverick, there was also like vibrating road gravel noise threat it felt mm-hmm. like i was in like an echo chamber of a vehicle so um and that's the the heavier of the two because it's got the the, the battery pack in it so interior is nicer in the santa cruz it's more cramped in the santa cruz but it's kind of got like a a cockpit feel to it mm-hmm. um the like the multimedia is like tilted at the driver a little bit um i still like maverick quite a bit i mm-hmm. i would like to drive like an XLT or an FX4 mm-hmm. version. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's real. It's a really, really tough comparison. I it, I've driven the Santa Cruz briefly. I'm supposed to get one in a couple of weeks. I, as much as I love the Maverick, I think given my own money, I think I'd spend a little bit more on the Santa Cruz just because quality is better overall. I like the way the Santa Cruz looks more. Um, text a little bit more advanced and i just i don't know i think the santa cruz is just a little bit more unique um what about throwing the ridgeline into the mix i love the ridgeline i have no ridgeline is there. fantastic i mean such, it, such a good vehicle and it rides so well and and i'm gonna go back right? to what, yeah it, it rides so well it is so comfy and ross i'm gonna i'm gonna go back to what ross said like you know in terms of like the off-roading that 90 percent of people do yeah. and also your i would you know, we'll probably get flack for this, but like your typical, your, your average truck buyer would be totally fine with the capability of the Ridgeline. Mm-hmm. It's a great, it's a great truck. And I think that 
you know, people who are all these like, oh, F-150, Ram 1500, you know, these people that are so nitty gritty, like a truck is this, it has to be body on frame, it has to be all this like big block V8, all that, whatever, you know, yeah. like people need to realize that like the Ridgeline is a truck, Santa Cruz is a truck, the Maverick is a truck, they're different trucks, but they are great at what they do. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of the Ridgeline, I drove one a couple months yep. ago and Dude, it's super cool. That 750 mile trip I did with the Frontier. Mm-hmm. I did the exact same trip with the Ridgeline earlier in the summer. I de- like identical, same mm-hmm. roads, same like went to the same hotel, same hotel, the same off road hub, and like back. And I take the Ridgeline every single time. Yeah, it's a super underrated truck, and it, it, it and it has a standard all wheel drive, now, which makes love it even great. Absolutely yeah. love that thing. All right, if you want to jump off, I'll wrap up the show in a little bit because I still need to okay. talk about wagon here. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it. I need to uh, tackle a little bit of homework that's due at midnight. Sweet. So. Later. All right, guys. Good luck. Good to see you. Good Catch luck. Y'all later. I'll still do your plugs. <laughs> okay. Thanks. <laughs> and thanks for joining us, Robbie. We'll talk. Yeah, to you for sure. We'll see you soon. And now it was two. Well, now we get to compare our Wagoneer thoughts, and you ruined it for me. You really did. <laughs> that's not true. That's. Uh, let me get my Wagoneer picture. Oh, I gotta prep it first. Not. I don't want. Well, before before we do Wagoneer, so you drove the Grand Cherokee L off road, yeah? I rode in it. Um, you rode in it. Okay. Do you do you have any thoughts on that? Because I didn't take it off road, but I had it the week before you testing it. I liked it. Like you liked I, it. Okay. I, I don't. And this is from my large family background. I don't like Grand Cherokees in particular because they're five seaters. Like. Mm -hmm. i can't i can't use it that much so Mm -hmm. um the third row made it very reasonable to me it's only it it seats six because you end up with second row captains and then two in the third row Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. the um fam cam like i didn't know that was a thing oh yeah the pacifica that's the the pacifica introduced it that's such a it's such a good feature for families so i don't know if you know i don't know if you know this but i think with fam cam uh I think it actually also works at night too. So you can see night vision. Of the oh, kids. so it was dark enough in the woods that it was mm-hmm. in the night vision setting already. Like oh, it was nice. like an infrared and, style as I looked. Yeah. Like this. And you, and you know, you can touch each seat to zoom in on it. And then, you oh, can I didn't know that. The, yeah. And you can use the microphone. It's, uh, it's such a great feature. The Pacifica has it. Okay. So, yeah. So I was completely intrigued by that. Um, the, the, the Grand Cherokee L that we were in again, had the adjustable suspension. So, Mm-hmm. The, and the same thing we ran into, I ran into with the Wagoneer is you're in the highest setting, you put on a burst of speed in the Wagoneer and it's like decreasing for your gun too yeah. fast. Like, yeah. no, 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 I'm still off road. You yeah. stay <laughs> um, and so the same thing happened in the Grand Cherokee L, uh, but it was really spacious. Like the, even behind mm-hmm. the third row, there was still quite a bit of cargo. But like that's, that is now an option I would consider. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, it's the... That's a good point about that cargo space behind the third row. Cause like some of these other SUVs, I think uh, it's been a minute since I've been in like a, a Telluride or a Palisade, but like, you know, the, the cargo space with that third row up is pretty minimal. It's kind of tricky to fit even a duffel bag back there. See, I, thought, but like, I thought those were good. That's how little I have in behind uh, Sequoia that I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Telluride's great with the third row. Mm-hmm. There's like, and, and, like 23 and again, like, feet. The, yeah, and again, like with the Telluride, like there is there is room, but like I I would definitely say Grand Cherokee L offers more cargo room behind yeah. that third row with it up. And then the great thing with the Grand Cherokee is the the Grand the new Grand Cherokee L is that you know you've obviously got that like power folding. You just tap the button once and it drops. Yeah. Same for the second row. But what's really cool is that if you go around to the passenger side uh, or either one of the rear doors towards like the second row buckets there's actually another set of controls to power fold the third row. Okay. So you can just like stand there and drop the third row without having to go. I, I don't know. I, I don't have to go to the trunk to do it. Like, <laughs> no, no. The Suburban I have to do. I actually, in the Sequoia, I know I can do it from the second row. I don't know if I can do it in the second row in the Suburban. Mm-hmm. I, I liked the Grand Cherokee when I had it. I did not like the gas mileage. No, it's um, terrible. It was terrible like gas 16 mileage. you posted, like. Yeah, it was like 16 something, but you know, I thought it was a nice interior. I it took me a while to warm up to the steering. I thought this, you know, you got this like colossal steering wheel, and the, I thought the steering was a little loose for my liking, but yep. I put quite a bit of miles on it. And I, I did at the end of the day and 
enjoy it. I the styling I wasn't too keen on at first, but I did warm up to it. I still don't um, really like the look of either of the new ones, but yeah, it's subjective. <laughs> like it's just my taste. Like mm-hmm. to me, a bunch of people and, that'll still like it. And I think that the previous Grand Cherokee, the one that used, you know, like the, the Mercedes Benz underpinnings for God knows how long. Um, I do think I I wish I could have that styling with the new interior mm. of the Grand Cherokee. Yeah, yeah. that makes you know? sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I, I don't think it, we can get the room then. Like, I don't I don't think they can get the extended. Then. No, no, absolutely not. Yeah, absolutely not. So speaking of extendedness. <laughs> <laughs> this this was like uh, of the vehicles i was up there super interested about like yes 392 wrangler trx mm-hmm. raptor bronco mm-hmm. wagoneer was like the thing that i wanted to drive the most yeah you were excited about that <laughs> well because it's the one that has a life application for me like i could fit all the kids in there mm-hmm. um and it's 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 big like it is that mm-hmm. We're, we're, we went a, on our, a, that's a big vehicle. Yeah. We went on our sightseeing trip around road America, finding all the fun photo spots. And there were some places we went through. I was like, Oh, this is very tight right here. All of a sudden, mm-hmm. like it's, it is a full size SUV. It's definitely on par with a Tahoe. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't been in a new Tahoe or Yukon yet. Like the brand new generation. The um, at independent, you know, the switch to the independent rear suspension, like it definitely like, you know, improves the ride a little bit, I would say. Um, I will say that the third row in the, in any of the, well, I haven't been in the Cadillac Escalade yet, but in the Tahoe or the Yukon or the Suburban, um, the third row is way below what's offered in the Grand Wagoneer and the Wagoneer. Yeah. You have so much more space. And I, man, the third row, Jeep just killed it with the third row and the Wagoneer and the Grand Wagoneer. Definitely they, the best in the segment. They kept, quite a bit of cargo room behind you as mm-hmm. well like yeah it's, it's, it is my my this is the ultimate dad like my our our measurement for that stuff is a bob stroller like um <laughs> and you don't have to know what that is the the other dads will know exactly what i'm talking about <laughs> they're like 400 dollars, and our, ours is like 13 years old now so like it's been through all yeah. of the kids but like it, it it collapses fairly well but it still takes up quite a bit of space um and so like in the sequoia that's almost an issue getting it behind there in the highlander it was really i had to take wheels off every time we put it away in the highlander which which highlander did you drive again uh it was a 2013 that we had okay that was the one we owned Mm -hmm. um and i think in the newer generation that room got smaller yeah that's not good yeah um and so the 08 sequoia like there was enough room to get the bob in like i didn't have to take the wheels Mm -hmm. off the suburban i just throw it in the lace flat so we deal whatsoever Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. it Doing the mental math in my head, it looked like that stroller would fit with ease in the back of the Wagoneer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, I'm on board. And you, you mentioned the possibility of them extending the Wagoneer. They're, they're, they're definitely going to do a, a Grand Wagoneer and a Wagoneer L. Um, is it going to be L? Like, is it... Probably. I, th- I think so, just in terms of with the, with the naming of like the, Grand Cherokee, yeah. Grand Cherokee L, you know their their designers or, or their product planners are so keeping tabs on chevy and ford you know with the yeah. expedition expedition max suburban right. yukon to tower or whatever um that they they can't not have right. well, an extended one yeah toyota's never extended the sequoia like it's been around mm-hmm. since 08 guys just bump me out a foot and a half like i'll buy it like it's <laughs> no big deal sequoia max or something I, like that yeah, yeah whatever what would they call the sequoia i have extended no sequoia. they don't they don't extend anything like because there there is a there is a um supposedly there is a grand highlander coming out with an actual third like, row this time instead of kind of an afterthought third row in the really current one yeah so there, there's a there's they're supposed to be coming out with a much bigger highlander dude if they called it the grand sequoia i'd be okay with that <laughs> that would be kind of cool that would be kind of cool I mean, it would be yeah. um okay so the thing i noticed about the interior is 100 percent the thing you pointed out to me where some of the materials aren't I feel like some of the materials don't match the price point. Mm-hmm. So, um, some of the fit and finish was 
a little disappointing. I think it looks great. You know, it's, it's, it a, it's a very modern, luxurious, very premium looking interior. There were just a few spots where, um, you know, my, when I was driving, it was like, if my knee just like, which is a little bit to the right up against the knee pad, some of that plastic at the center console on the dashboard, like, moves, moves a quite a bit, bit. and yeah. i was kind of like disappointed by that which is a shame because it's such it's, it's a really well executed interior otherwise and the, so the one i drove was I, I didn't drive any of the grand wagoneers mm-hmm. um i only drove the wagoneer um and i got it dirty before we got to the offer of course but this is after it's been <laughs> through the offer of course a couple of times this had a a, a much smaller diameter wheel than all of the other ones the other, other i think those are eight, 18s right? i think they're 18 I think those are 18s yeah um it look at that it it was it was good like it was surprisingly capable it was comfy like all the as you go over the rocks and the other ones you could kind of like feel it and this you were mm-hmm. just kind of like oh there was a little one like it the suspension kind of sucked up the bumps we just kind of glided across a lot of them mm-hmm. the, the steering was super light and there was very much truck steering like it was over boosted yeah. yep um yeah. i the th- again, the off-road mode, the highest off-road setting, you can only go like 10 or 15. Were you in that photo? Was that photo taken with the adjustable air springs up? This is all the way up. That is all the way up. Okay. Yeah. yeah I was going to say that. It looks like it's riding pretty high. Yeah. It's, funny. it's it was, cute. It's the, like it's on stilts. <laughs> the day before, it looked like it was like, I'm like, oh my God, it looks terrible. It's on small wheels and tires and it's on the ground. What is happening? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um so that would that like, but the visual is a part of the vehicle. Like there are mm-hmm. some people that are going to be like, oh, I want it. Like if it's always up, I'm I'm good with. I would drive it all up all the time, but it lowers itself like the Ram to conserve fuel. When you're at speed, it's like going to the. It literally says like going back to more aerodynamic mode. Yeah, or yeah. Like, which I would say fine. that a lot of your why I I really don't anticipate i mean the grand wagoneer has just as much off-road capability supposedly as the wet as the regular wagoneer but i don't see maybe a, a 0.5 percent of grand wagoneer owners actually taking their grand wagoners off-road right but with the wagoneer up i think you'll see like definitely a little bit more of that audience going and doing like some degree of off-roading well, albeit like a very small group but it's nice to know that you know if you do need to do some off-roading the wagoneer is it's capable it can do it i was yeah. really really surprised by how big of a vehicle it is how wide of a vehicle it is and you know it, i was i was very surprised it, it did it did not struggle the the section with the articulation was one where the guy's face lit up as a giant mm-hmm. smile as he guided me through it mm-hmm. because of how high i had each wheel in the air yeah, like it, yeah. It, and it didn't feel uncomfortable to me. He was like, "You had each wheel like two feet in the air." <laughs> like I, I couldn't tell. It felt great to me in here. Like I don't yeah. know what to tell you. I um, when I took I took that same Wagoner off road to through the course, and um, I don't think I had the air suspension lifted up all the way. Okay, because there were a couple times where, especially going through the up and down the hills, like no issue whatsoever. Um, same with the articulation. Like I was, yeah, I was surprised. I'm like, oh, this is doing pretty good. <laughs> um, but there were a few times going through the woods where it was pretty narrow. And I would, I will say that this was easier to navigate through the woods than the TRX was by a oh, long shot. Yeah, drastically. Yeah. Um, but I think there were a couple spots where I should have lifted up the suspension quite a bit with the, okay. the toggle switch because um, even like following the, you know, the prompts from the, the spotter up ahead. You know, I I'd come down and I'd go over a rock, and you would just oh, those poor running boards on the side. Were just <laughs> yeah, I it, it, it made it through the course, but I was like, oh, you just hear bangs, and you're just like, oh, I hope that was nothing important down there. That just got damaged, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. But it was it was capable. It's a very very capable vehicle off road, and it the Hemi is great. Now the only time I struggled with it is like these are kind of like all season tires mm-hmm. and the section after the mud puddle where it was at hard, right. Basically became a soupy swamp at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And it was in mud and sand mode, which means no traction control. 
Mm -hmm. and I literally was just spinning tires. And so I had to actually back it up and put it in snow mode to reactivate the traction control. Interesting. And so once I backed up and I got to a little bit of like drier grass um, with the traction control on, I was able to power through the like slippy stuff. And -hmm. then I went right back to mud and sand mode for the rest of it and had no issues whatsoever. But it's it's big. Like Mm -hmm. it's full-size SUV. There's a great big V8 under the hood of this one. Um, I think that's all I had on it. I hope that they do a Trailhawk. I do kind of hope they do a wagon. I do kind of hope they do a Trailhawk. I mean, you've got Ford, Ford Expedition Timberline. Yep. You've got the the Suburban and the Tahoe Z71, which I I swear driving around tonight, I have a Lexus IS that I'm testing this week. I'm like driving around tonight. I probably saw 15 new Tahoe and suburban Z 71s I mean, they're selling them like hotcakes, but like, I hope that, you know, they do end up doing a Wagoneer Trailhawk. I think it'd be pretty cool. They're obviously not going to do a track Hawk. Well, I don't know. I shouldn't, I shouldn't say that. I I I wouldn't put anything past the way. Yeah. I was going to say (laughs) they might throw a supercharger in there. (laughs) Right. Um, I think that's everything that we had on the list. Mm -hmm. It was a lot. What do you you want to plug, man? It was a good show. (laughs) Yeah, uh, if you want to follow us for automotive industry insights and news, uh, you can check out autopacific.com. Otherwise, you can follow us on Twitter at autopacific. I am also at Robbie underscore DeGraff on Twitter. Did you turn Instagram off again? Yeah, I left Instagram. It was just, I don't know, man. You you got back on, you got off. Yeah, I've kind of like bounced around on it. That's actually where I met my fiance. Brenna was on Instagram many years ago, hey, um, you, but I, you've used it for its purpose. Then you've got, I've me. used it for you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I just, I have, I have more fun on Twitter. I feel like Instagram gets a little too like influencer. Yeah, kind it of, does. It absolutely kind of fake does. And just, just, I, I, I think Twitter is much more fun. So. I've been, uh, that's where you can follow us on Twitter. I've been curating both of my feeds on, on Twitter and Instagram lately. I've been, I've been trying to eliminate some stuff that's been driving me nuts. So yeah uh sweet so you can rate and review this show on itunes you can like and subscribe on youtube if you're watching youtube you got to see all of the pictures uh ron i know you're watching youtube now because you told me you're no longer listening to the audio version because you're tired of having to watch the show twice <laughs> my friend ron it was like dude i'm watching the show twice because you'll talk about the pictures as i listen he's like then i gotta go back and watch i was like i appreciate the view and the click so uh thanks but I know he's watching now. So thank you, Rob. Hey, Chris. Chris, here's a question for you. When are yeah. you going to start? When are you going to start offering these stickers? Uh, see, we were there. There's a website in development. So if, if somebody's really good at WordPress and wants to help me out, <laughs> I would appreciate. Oh, I can help you out with that. Uh, yeah, I can I might, totally help you out with that. Yeah, I'll, I'll throw some. Uh, we'll talk about it later. Um, so the Hooniverse on Twitter, the Real Hooniverse on Instagram, the Hooniverse podcast is back. Jeff Glucker's at like 304, 305 now recording. Um, you can read writing on Hooniverse, UTV driver, ATV writer, everyday driver. Uh, Ross says again soon. I don't know when he's doing that or not. Um, I should be writing some stuff up from all of this. I need to just, I need to mind meld it a little better. Uh, Ross is at no, not like the one from friends on Instagram. And I'm at overlanding dad on Twitter and Instagram. That's where Robbie and I talked the most, I think. <laughs> <laughs> on twitter not instagram yeah yeah <laughs> uh, and that's the show thanks robbie yeah thanks for having me out it was good to good to chat about four by fours and race cars and all sorts of fun stuff